All righty. Are we on? All right. I guess you guys can are free to stand up and sing. Right? We need to do announcements. Oh, announcements. Here we go. Announcements. Sorry. Go ahead, Dwayne. You got the first okay. one. Okay. So our first announcement is this Saturday we are doing our drive-through uh, pumpkin decorating contest. We can't do trunk or treat because of COVID. But what we've decided to do is we're going to have tables decorated around the parking lot. You can drive through. We will have a ballot sheet for everybody to uh, decide what their favorite uh, pumpkin is. There's three different categories. Uh, one is family favorite. One is most Halloween-y. And... I can't remember what the other one is. Three categories, yes. Um, so we have all the candy we need. Thank you so much for those people who have packed candy. We uh, don't need any more, but if you want to make a cash donation to help with other expenses that we're going to be doing at there, that is fine. You can see Wendy and let her know. If you want to participate and do a table and you haven't let Wendy know, that's fine. Just let her know as soon as possible so we can make sure you have a table to decorate in the contest. And... Um, if you have agreed to already do a table, Wendy sent out an email this week. So if you haven't gotten that email, you need to let her know also with all the rules and guidelines and stuff like that. So we want to see you all. That's from 3 to 5 on Saturday, which is Halloween. All right. So today at noon, following the 11 o'clock service, we are going to have a brief, ever so brief, board meeting to pass all the stuff for charge conference. You are used to having church conferences. This will be a charge conference, and that's a little bit different. What that means is those people with votes are pretty much <clears throat> the administrative council and a couple other folks on the outside, but pretty much the administrative council. So you begin to understand the redundancy of the United Methodist Church and uh, the fact that the administrative board gets to vote on stuff pretty much twice in a row, the same stuff because um, the people who are on the fringes that come in for a charge conference, you know, don't have enough votes to sway anything anyway. So it's, it's anyway, yeah, it's the way it is, has been for my entire life. So there we go. You should have, if you are on the administrative council, you should have gotten a link from the district office. If you did not get a link, you need to let me know, and I will, I will send you the link myself. And then I will let the district send you a link. If you get the link from the district, if, use that one. They should be the same. Um, settled that when I went to the district office to turn all our stuff in for the meeting on Tuesday night. So the charge conference is Tuesday night. It, um, my wife and myself and Deborah will be in the fellowship hall Tuesday night with it on the big screen. If you wish to vote, you will need to have your own portable mobile device of some sort so that you can, you can join. That's, that's how that works. They don't, you know, there is no group voting method as far as I know, as far as the district superintendent is concerned. So you need to bring your phone or an iPad or something. You can watch it on the big screen, but in order to vote, you'll need to have a mobile device. So, or you can just do it in your comfy bunny slippers with a cup of coffee in hand. And, uh, and you can watch it, watch it there. So um, there will be a brief meeting today. The only thing we will do is to pass all that stuff, and then we will let you move on. Uh, I'm not anticipating huge numbers because we don't have huge numbers anyway. So there we go. That's, that's today, and that's uh, Tuesday night. Wednesday night. When uh, Wednesday is in the Word, which is our new member class, we have been blessed to be outside three weeks in a row, out by the basketball hoop. So there we go, three weeks. Um, maybe maybe we'll make it four, maybe we won't. It's getting darker and darker, and I'm not sure why you guys did not think when you were putting lights in in that parking lot that there would be Bible study <laughs> being held in the parking lot in October. I. I I'm just not sure what your problem was. Everybody knows you have Bible study in the parking lot in October. Did you, Pete? I'm glad somebody did. Anyway, needless to say, the problem that we're having is that we're running out of light. And then come next Sunday, we are going to have, uh, we go back to standard time. Is that right? I always want to, uh, who knows? We, we fall back anyway, whether that's standard or saving. I, I'm pretty sure we're going back to standard time next Sunday. Also, next Sunday is uh, All Saints Day. So just to let you be aware that those folks 
who have passed away this year, we will be uh, lighting candles in uh, their remembrance. And we have not gotten stuff out. We've been working on all this other stuff because uh, I discovered uh, charge conference came a month earlier this year, so that's that's why um, things are all kind of bunched up here in October. So uh, I think is that everything. Bible study, men's prayer, breakfast tomorrow morning. If I get up, so there we go. If you get up, oh, Bible study this week with the boys and the girls, mm -hmm. right? All right, yep. it is that week two and four. So there we are. Any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Are we good? All right. In that case, stand up and let us sing for you. Friends, we are so happy that you are here this morning and uh, in person, and we're happy that you're with us at home. Please join us in our first song, Blessed Be the Name. Living Hope by Phil Wickham. Turn to 
song for right now is Holy is the Lord.
You may be seated. I want to share some prayer requests with you. I don't, I've been too busy getting everything back up and running to pay attention to COVID numbers here in Radford. I just share with you, they're not, they're not really good. So um, I say that um, to say that we, we aren't closing up. I'm saying that to say um, y'all need to be careful and you need to be wearing your masks and you need to be keeping your distance. I was noticing that um, in Wisconsin, they're uh, over, on the, on the verge of overrunning their uh, hospitals. So um, <clears throat> your masks and your distancing and your washing of your hands is not meant to stop it. It's meant to, to slow it down. So just remember that. And just be careful and be conscientious and uh, stay healthy. That's, that's all, I, all I ask. So just be aware of what's going on. So prayer requests. Uh, Mike Yanko has family in Colorado um, that have been evacuated. Uh, because of the uh, forest fires. They're now in Colorado, too. So uh, just be aware and keep all those folks in prayer as, uh, as, you, as, they, as they attempt to... Uh, I, I don't even know where they are with the forest fires, or if they're even close to containment. Last time I checked in, they weren't having any luck at all. So I guess when the entire West Coast burns to a cinder, it'll be done. But um, we're hoping it doesn't get that far. Um, it just uh, it gets gets bad, especially when it gets into residential areas. So, just keep all those folks in in your prayers. Um, just remember also that you experienced the highest temperature of the day at eight o'clock when you were getting up and getting ready and getting over here. So it's all temperatures downhill. So stay dry and stay stay healthy. I believe that um, those are all the all the prayer requests. That, you know, folks are. You know, um, home recovering and doing therapy and in Pulaski and all that kind of stuff. So just um, be aware Bob Jones is getting ready to go have his pacemaker taken care of. So if you would just keep him in your prayers. Uh, so and the schools are in the business of trying to figure out what comes next and when, when it comes next. The surveys are all back from all the parents and the teachers. So they're all probably having pretty heavy, heavy discussions. So just be in prayer for them and uh, all, everybody who's affected. I believe that that is, that is everything. Um, just if you all remember to keep my mother-in-law in your prayers, I would appreciate it. Um, she's in a, an assisted living facility and the guy across the hall has, has COVID and they have, uh, it's not a really big place, but they had 12 people um, and 14 staff, if you can imagine that. Um, uh, they have, have had COVID. It's uh, you don't, you don't want to get my mother-in-law. She doesn't get going on it. She could be a southerner, I suppose. She says it once and it's over unless she's got something constructive to add. So there you go. Um, but uh, I, that has been her fear all along. She says, oh, they worry about us getting out. It's, it's not us you have to worry about. She said, it's, it's the staff and what they do in their off hours and whether or not they bring it in. So we are, we are hoping and praying. Uh, we, my wife calls her every day. Four walls get awfully, awfully tight after a fashion when you cannot get out. So um, I suspect that there are other folks who are in that same place. So just keep them in your prayers as well. Is there anything else this morning? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, shall we? Gracious and loving God, we come before you this morning and we give you thanks. For those who are recovering from their illnesses, for those who are still in rehab, those who are awaiting surgery, we, we hold them up before you. Um, we think of Graham's family, and we think of that little baby um, that I forgot to mention, who's in NICU, having a hard time breathing. And we ask that you would uh, be with the family. It's, uh, it's especially tense when there is a baby. Um, and we ask that you would have your hand upon it, and that your healing presence would be with that child, and that you might do what the doctors and nurses cannot do and that you would uh, make it whole and uh, save it in the largest sense of the word. Because we need to understand that your salvation is not just about, about our souls, but it is about all of us, every, every inch of us, and redeeming us 
for the good of your people. We pray this morning for the redemption of this world. We pray for the redemption of this country. Remind us, O oh God, that our redemption as a nation does not rely on the outcome of political elections. It relies on whether our knees are bent at the throne of God. Most gracious God, remind us who is the ruler. Remind us that you are stronger and bigger than pandemics, that you are larger than lost businesses, that you are bigger than politics. You are a God who has, who has worked with his people for, for thousands of years, who has created a nation, who has been with his people as they have migrated from nation to nation. You have led your people under communist rule, and you have led your people on some of the most the freest nations on the face of the earth. You have followed your people and been with them, and there is no political system that has held you back. May we be your people and you be our God. And know that our future, our future is in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. You have a couple of things to be thankful for this morning. I suspect my cosmos... I just, I, I, I have grown cosmos off and on over the years. My cosmos are at, at six and a half, seven feet tall. I have never grown cosmos six and a half to seven feet tall. I can't, I have to do this to get to the top of them. And I just want to tell you that it may be cold, but my cosmos are appreciating the rain this morning. And I'm appreciating the last blooming flower in my garden. And I get up every morning and there's this big, huge bush, which is more like a small tree. And I get there and I got, uh, I got all three colors. Um, the deer were, were gracious enough to leave me three colors um, this year. And uh, so was the woodchuck and the rabbits, just to mention a few. Um, I, I'd pay good money for the elimination of the deer in this town, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, but uh, I have tons to be thankful for with the rain because I will get, I will get more time out of, out of those flowers until the, the first hard frost that we get. So I bet you have a couple of things that you could think of this morning as the band plays. And you can give thanks to God and offer that praise and thanksgiving up to him. So one of the things that we are always thankful for are God's promises. And throughout the Bible, he promises us things over and over again. Traditionally, we do not put the words that we are going to sing up on the screen, but this Sunday we are. This song is called Do It Again.
Our text for this morning comes from Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab at the top of Pisgah. Having been there, I don't know why he didn't just drive around and come in from the back. It would have been so much easier. I'm just saying. Climbing up from Moab, is a, that's, a, that's a bit of a bit of a haul. But anyway, across from Jericho, mm, 
There the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea. The Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes. But you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of God, died there in Moab, as the, as the Lord had said. It was a farm, a small family farm. It could have been anywhere, I suppose. There was a family with children on that farm who each had their chores to do. With each child... Each person shouldering part of the burden, things did not seem so heavy. They could almost be fun, and one would forget that you were teaching and learning about responsibility. All the work got done each day, or so went the plan. It was one child's job to come in each evening before dusk and shut the barn door, and close the animals in for the night, and keep them safe from outside harm and predators. The child was not keen on closing the door, but began each evening at twilight to make the trudge up the hill to the barn to close the doors. <sighs> As the summer wore on, the child would sometimes forget and show up late. There were creeks that needed crossing and dams that needed building. And each afternoon as the sun began to sink and he headed home, he would see the barn on the hill, make the walk, and close the door. There were forts that needed building and tending to. Sometimes now he would forget until supper and his mother would send him out up the hill to shut the barn door before he was allowed a single bite to eat. As the leaves began to fall, there were so many adventures to be had. He remembered the barn without being reminded. And late in the fall, the child lost track of time. The sun had set, and he hurried home, guided only by the lights in the windows of the farmhouse. Have you closed the barn doors? Mother asked. No, ma'am, was the reply. The child headed out the door, and walked to the gated fence. It was a dark and starless night. Perhaps it was cloud-covered. It was impossible to tell. You could see absolutely nothing. At the edge of the light from the house, he stopped. The child was young and small unsure what lay out there in the darkness and places that could not be seen. Mother arrived with a lantern in her hand. What is the problem, she asked. It's dark. I can't see the barn. I'm afraid. I'm not going out there. Mother raised the lantern and stepped forward. Here, 
we will walk to the edge of the light. And so they did. And they stopped. And the light pushed farther out ahead of them. Take the lantern and go shut the barn doors. It's your job. But I can't see the barn, the boy protested. Then she said, just walk to the edge of the light. And so the boy did. I still can't see it. But you know it's there. Just walk to the edge of the light again. And I want you to keep walking to the edge of the light until you find the barn. Moses and the children of Israel had walked to the edge of the light. For years, centuries in fact, they had been told the story of the promised land. It was a place, a home, a possession, where there would be rest, where they would be God's people and he would be their God. It was a story they brought with them into the land of Egypt when they fled starvation and famine. It was a story they told for 500 years. 500 years they told the story. And as they stood at the base of Mount Nebo, they could see that the promised land was filled with giants. And you and I would meet those giants later in the scriptures along with David. We knew it was true. There were rumors of Philistines and Ammonites and Jebusites all in their cities, well secured. And they all claimed the promised land as their home. And they knew, the children of Israel knew, they would have to fight for the land. It was a lot. It was a lot to ask of a people who had languished as slaves for 500 years. They had seen the exodus and they had seen the miracles. But was the land still there? I mean, was it still theirs? Would God be with them as they crossed the Jordan and attempted to claim the land? It would require... It would require a lot of faith to make a 500-year-old story a reality. Because sometimes after 500 years, that's all you have is a story. No one had been alive for generations that even remembered what that land looked like. So God took Moses to the top of Mount Nebo. That's where I was. And God said, Look with your eyes and your heart. You have heard the story. You have heard the promise. And there, my friends, there it is, would have been a little greener back in the day. But there it is from Dan to Beersheba. The land is not just a promise. The land is there. And I gave it to Abraham. And I gave it to Isaac. I gave it to Jacob and now I give it to you and your people. 
see, see the land that I have given you and the promise of generations. And I am here to tell you, my friends, when you stand at that point and you look out where Moses looked, you have a moment. When you look out and you see the promise of God laid before you, you can only imagine what Moses and the children of Israel were thinking and feeling. You see, faith, faith is like that. Seldom are we asked to jump into the unknown, the total unknown, total blackness, total mystery. God will usually give us something, something to see, something to hold on to. Not everything, but something. Something perhaps as small as a mustard seed to build our faith on. And I am here to tell you, you cannot see all of the promised land from Nebo unless you are Superman with your telescopic vision. You can just barely, if it were a better picture, but I'm not sure how many better pictures and better days there are from Mount Nemo. They're all a little fuzzy and hazy. But what you can see at the very edge of your vision is Jerusalem. So you can see maybe half or two-thirds of the country. There is no way that you see Mount Hebron in Dan in the north, the tallest peak in all of Israel. You can see as far as Jerusalem. And only because of the skyscrapers that are there now. Now I will not debate what Moses saw. But he saw enough. He saw enough to believe. He saw enough to know. And the children of Israel knew that it would be a long battle. But when they faced the people of Jericho and Ai, the armies of the Philistines and the Ammonites, they would remember that God met Moses on Nebo and showed him the land that was theirs, that God had promised that it belonged to them, that it was their home, it was their inheritance. And no matter how long the battle was, no matter how unsettled the country became, no matter how mixed up the politics were, they had faith and believed. They could now walk, my friends, to the edge of the light. And when they arrived they could do the same again. This morning, Jesus brings you up. He brings you up onto the mountain. The mountain of God. When you invited him into your heart, your spiritual eyes were opened and you stood, you stood upon that high mountain with him. And from the top of the mountain you could see, you could see the kingdom of God as it lays out before you. You could see it spread out before you as it should be. For a moment, for a moment there at the altar on the mountain of God you could see a place. You could see a promised land and you could see the promises of God all coming true. You actually saw a place where people loved each other out to the depths of their hearts. You saw a world where people respected people and guarded human dignity. You saw a place where people lifted each other up to be all that they were created to be. It was a kingdom where no one hungered. No one slept on the streets. And perhaps, yes, perhaps, maybe, the streets were paved with gold. It's what John saw anyway.
It has been years. Years since you climbed that high mountain and looked out with the eyes of God onto his kingdom. It has been 2,000 years since we as a church have climbed that mountain with Jesus and heard the words of Moses and Elijah and God himself. And we knew. We knew to stay upon the mountain. We knew that there were foreigners occupying the promised land. There were strangers of greed and hatred, slavery and oppression, hunger and pestilence that filled, filled the promised land and God's kingdom. And ignorance, too, dwelt in the deep corners. We knew. We knew that day that the battle for the kingdom would be fierce and it would be long. And we would not take the kingdom without a fight. We had seen, we had seen, we had seen the kingdom from the mountaintop and we knew that the promise could become reality. And coming down from the mountain, our faith, our faith had been given enough sight so that we would not weary in the battle. And though the wrong hmm, seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. I'm not sure what God's trying to say. That's the second week I've quoted different parts of that hymn. But you have seen, my friends, you have seen the kingdom of God. I want you to pick up your lanterns and though you cannot see the final destination, all I want you to do this morning is walk to the edge of the light. Just walk to the edge of the light. Just take the lantern and step off until you reach the edge. The nation is there. You have seen it. You have climbed the mountain with God. You cannot see it now, but my friends, that, that is faith. As the band comes forward, I invite you to step to the edge of the light and believe. Would you stand? Take them up as you leave and walk to the edge of the light. Walk to the edge of the light and believe. For it is all you are required to do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
This is my car. 